Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a very interesting time. And I'm um, here today with George. And we've decided that we're going to try now to provide a little bit of live entertainment in the morning to the watch community during these difficult times. I first want to say I want to thank the nine people that are in this building, a building that usually has 60, 70, 80 people at times, for being here, practicing really good social habits while keeping the company going. Um, we are open, we're buying and we're selling and we're trading and there's 60 other people that work here that are working from home, doing the best they can, being with their families. So I really wanted to thank the people that are here that is at least keeping this going. And I wanna to say to everybody who's not working, uh, stay safe. It's a great time to be with your families. Uh, take care of yourself and uh, just be smart. That said, uh, George and I wanted to reach out to the watch community because Watchbox is really not just a place that sells watches or buys watches or trades watches. We're really a global community of people who love watches. And in these times, I know I've been at home watching TV and there's no entertainment, there's no sports. So I figured that George and I are gonna come and we're gonna be live. So this isn't edited, we don't really know, I've never done this, but I just think that it's time that we at least reach out to the watch community and the watch lovers and people that enjoy the hobby and provide them a little bit of entertainment. That said, I also want to say to the people in Switzerland and all over the world that are in the watch industry, we're all going to get through this. Um, Rolex and Patek Philippe have shut their offices in Switzerland, uh, which shows the magnitude of the situation, but they're great companies. They're going to lead the way. And I think that, uh, I think George and I just wanted to uh, come and and be a little lighthearted here. So that said, George, I also want to extend my thoughts and prayers to everybody uh, that's dealing with um, you know everything that's come from this horrible pandemic. Um, I talk to our Hong Kong office every day, and uh, they're slowly getting back to normal and into a regular routine, which is encouraging. Um, they were probably four weeks ahead of us when when dealing with this and. Um, if they've turned a corner, uh, hopefully we can too. Um, and, uh, you know, we just need to uh, continue to uh, practice social distancing and, and do the best we can and uh, trying to make sure that we can, we can battle through this. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, a couple months from now, we're, we're, we're much more back to normal. Uh, several people told me it would be cool if we, if we continued to try and do shows of some sort. So, uh, you know, provide some sort of distraction. You know, uh, I'm a big sports lover and that was my biggest, you know, distraction and something that I would really enjoy and we don't have that. So hopefully some people can uh, appreciate, you know, us talking about some watches during, during this tough time. So um, Danny and I were saying, you know, what should we talk about? And we're, we're, really going to just kind of wing it. We brought out some cool watches that we thought were, were true value because I think, you know, that's something that, you know, I was asked, how, how is the industry going to be affected by all of this? And, um, you know, brands like Rolex and Paddock, Hublot have already said they're stopping production and uh, which is good. I mean, they, they won't flood the market when, you know, consumption won't be nearly what it what it was prior to all of this. Um, and, you know, where should we start, Dan? I mean, we have some, some um, cool pieces. Should we start with the paddock? Since, yeah, let's uh, start with the paddock. So here we have a, a 5235. It's a regulator annual calendar, vertical satin finish dial. Uh, this is one of my favorite paddocks, uh, micro rotor in the, in the back of the watch. Uh, this was a watch that first came out at 53.6 retail. You can buy the watch now in the mid to low 30s, and I think that that's a, a, a incredible value. Um, you know, so many people have been chasing the sports models with Paddock, and I think that some of the precious metal strap pieces are now under underappreciated, undervalued, and, and this is one of them. I mean, this watch is, is beautiful and something that I would love to own myself uh, one day if possible. And I also think that, you know, a lot of times Paddock Philippe and Rolex get all the attention. I think that we can talk about even a brand like Breguet. Uh, over the years, 
Breguet has come from, a, from a, a boom brand to a brand today that's misunderstood. And some of the values in Breguet are absolutely incredible. Uh, if somebody asks me today, should I go buy a brand new one? My answer would be, if you really love it, I would buy it. However, if you care about the value of what your timepiece is worth the next day, I probably go to the pre-owned side of Breguet because the values are just that powerful with great, great watches that you can buy today and really have no downside uh, and really get the enjoyment that you would get. So George, why not give like a couple examples of uh, Breguet and some of just absolutely exquisite pieces that you can buy at a fraction of the retail price, for instance. So we brought out two really cool ones. The, the Tradition is uh, one of my favorite Breguets. Uh, here we have the rose gold version, 26.6 retail. Uh, we're offering it for sale now for uh, about half off of that retail price. 37 millimeters, 50 hour power reserve, uh, transparent dial so you can see the mechanisms, very, very well uh, uh, finished movement and uh, showing the, the Breguet Parachute, which is their shock protection uh, system. Awesome, awesome watch, uh, industrial look, uh, something that, that's very cool and I think a, a fantastic value, just a classic uh, model for, for the brand. Here we have uh, a more expensive piece. This watch is, is spectacular. Uh, this is their Fusse Tourbillon. 189,700 uh, 189, retail. Uh, we're offering it at 65% off of that, that retail. Uh, Dome Sapphire Crystal, exposing the movement again. Uh, they're showing the Fusé chain, which is their constant force mechanism, uh, and a tourbillon. Uh, just two awesome, awesome watches from the brand. But and it, George, it shows you that even a brand like Breguet, uh, that maybe doesn't get the, the talk and the attention, somebody who would buy these watches are getting just they're absolutely breathtaking. And the value is so incredible that it just shows the power of pre-owned. Also, what, what, what's been happening in the last, you know, three, four days is the number of people that are calling that still want to buy a watch and they're sitting at home or they want to trade. But we have had a lot more people calling to sell us their timepieces. And what we're finding is they're understanding. Some are scared, some aren't. but we're here and look, we're buying watches at an incredible clip. Just the last few days we've purchased- Bought a very big package. Yeah, well yesterday. over a million dollars worth of watches. And we've sold well over a million dollars worth of watches in the last few days. But I think what we're learning, what we're hearing is the passion that people have for the product. Uh, the care that the collectors have for each other Many people from around the world are like their friends and they're sitting at home and if they can just enjoy the hobby and maybe this is a time that they can go and watch videos and and read up a little bit and they can learn and enjoy the hobby a little bit even more to distract them from what's going on out there. Yeah, I mean, it shows how strong the watch industry is and how much passion people have for it. I was in the industry, you know, in 2008, you were too, obviously, and the fact that it, it survived that, you know, it survived the, the courts crisis. I mean, the fact that people are still buying watches today, iPhones, you know, uh, uh, you know Apple watches and all tech, tech watches, um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy it's, and it's awesome. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll make it through this one too. Um, Danny and I recently did a show that'll go live uh, tomorrow talking about FP Journe. I'll just show a, a cool piece right here because we talk more about the brand, uh, you know, tomorrow. But this is one of the best perpetuals in the entire industry. Uh, everything can be set by hand. So you have an under lug corrector here to adjust the months. Hard for me to do this uh, so that you can see here. But you can cycle through the months with this. And then you can set the, the day and the date through the, the crown here. You rotate it one way uh, and it does uh, uh, one complication. You do it the other way, it, it does uh, another. So this is an in incredible watch, 68,000 retail, well-priced for what it is, truly instantaneous perpetual. So by that, it changes in one sixteen thousandth of a second. Once again, hard for me to uh, show this, but hopefully I can pull this off. So when it changes past midnight, it's almost like you can't even see it. It's so fast. Chime to the 
this slowly so we can see. But everything snaps over right at midnight. So a lot of perpetuals that are in the market are what are called drag perpetuals. So they change, not, not every single aperture will change exactly at midnight. That's not the case with this. Here we go. So very cool watch. We'll talk more about FP Jorn in our show that'll be live uh, Yeah, I think it's tomorrow. gonna be a great show. Uh, it's a show that George and I have done that will lay out what brand or why we think that uh, FP Jorn may be the brand of the of the 20s, of the decade of the 20s. Uh, that said, um, I also wanted to say that for people that are home that don't know, there are other great places to get educated other than just Watchbox and Tim Masso's videos. You can go to Hadinki. They've got great content for people that want to learn, people that want to hear about the industry. You go to Watch Pro. You can download their, um, their uh, newsletter because this isn't just about us, this is about our entire community. And there are a couple good places you can go just to keep track of what's going on and continue to learn about uh, timepieces. It'll be interesting to see how the brands uh, that we're going to be part of Basel World launch their new product now, when and, and how and where. Um, yeah, I heard that Rolex is just gonna have, they're gonna just launch it on their own website. That's what I heard just one day coming up, they're just gonna launch the pictures or- Just hit I, refresh and all yeah, the stuff. Yeah, and they may, they may not, I don't know. But I think too, what's gonna come from this whole uh, pandemic is there's gonna be changes. And even you and I doing this show, we would never have done this show. It's true. We may end up doing the show every morning if people like it, uh, just to keep people educated and having fun with the hobby. But. I think what we're going to find is that there's going to be real digital winners, George, because people are at home and they're going to want to consume content and uh, life's going to go on. So it'll be real interesting to see when this whole uh, virus blows over uh, how things are. Yeah, please provide us with, with feedback. Um, you know, if hopefully we're able to entertain you somewhat uh, during all of this, and if we can do anything better, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, uh, you know, in particular, we'll we'll try and do so. And like, go ahead. Sorry, but no. Let's leave in sport models. I'll tell you what I find incredible is just the power of Rolex and the sport models. Like, you still you still really can't get them. Uh, they are weakening a little bit at the over retail pre-owned side, but I think Rolex. I have to commend them. They're doing a great job with their retailers. They're supplying more than they have. They're really staying in touch with their retailers and they're providing uh, real a lot of support from what I hear from retailers, including ourselves, that they've just been super. Uh, so has Patek Philippe. And most of the brands have been super uh, and, and, and kind to what's going on out there today. But the two, but the sport models have truly, um, they hold up if somebody really wants to make a purchase and try to feel good in these times. You know, I'd still stick with the sport model Rolexes. They're affordable, they hold their value, and um, and we still have great demand on a daily basis for, for them. For sure. And uh, Rolex and Paddock are two of the most consummate partners. I mean, they're incredibly loyal to their retailers. They sell nothing direct. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how the brands that have tried to go direct to the consumer deal with this disruption now. Um, I you know, think you're going to see that more and more. I think you're going to see brands are going to have to reach out right to their customer, right to the consumer. Uh, education's going to change. In fact, education may not be at the store level moving forward after this. It may be that people get used to learning about the product online through videos and friends and community. Like, let's talk about Elang & Son, George. There's a, it's a brand that we haven't really spoken a lot about, but Watchbox does absolutely tremendous with it. It's one of our leading brands. It's a, they make five or 6,000 watches a year. It's the best quality possible. I mean, they're, it's, as, it's as good a quality as anybody produces. I think that, they're, that they don't get the attention they should. I think that their leadership a little bit uh, is so subdued that sometimes they don't get heard 
they don't get hurt as much as as the quality of the watch represents. You know what I mean, George? I think Long and Stone and Vacheron are two of the most undervalued brands in the in the industry. Um, Vacheron, longest continually manufactured brand in the world. Uh, they make, you know, they have three different pillars with their, their patrimony line, overseas line, and malt line. So they have their dress watch, they have their sports line, and, um, you know, they, the quality of their watches is along the same lines as that of an F.P. Journe or a Patek Philippe or a Long and so on, yet they're not, you know, and, and they're part of the Holy Trinity, but they're, they're not uh, regarded in the same light currently, and the, and the market value of their watches is, is far weaker. And I think it has to do with distribution and marketing, frankly, because the product quality is there, the history is there, the know-how is there. Um, and you know they make thirty-five thousand watches a year, roughly. Long and Stone five or six thousand watches a year. So, you know, it's it's shocking that they're they're so much weaker on the secondary market than you know their their competitors. But um, I think they're they're a great buy, and I think again, I think what people can do is look at some of these videos that a fellow um, that that one of our lead Tim Masso does. He does one minute videos on YouTube, and he also has a YouTube channel. On, uh, on reviews and I think you can learn so much and you'll see how great this brand is but also what's interesting is Watchbox now gets close to 5 million unique views a month from people who are learning from the videos that, that we do and the shows we do and the videos that Tim Massa does and uh, I don't get to talk too much about Tim but I'll tell you what he's a rock star I've never <laughs> seen anything like it the number of people that know him for anybody out there, if you really want to learn about this hobby and you really want to have a passion for watches, look at Tim Massa's uh, Instagram, look at Watchbox's channels because we put out great content. And the best thing is our employees that aren't here at Watchbox that are home working, they're like caged right now. They, they want to trade, they want to sell, uh, they want to buy. They Everybody in this building loves the hobby. and. For those of you that have been here, I think that 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 comes across pretty good. But again, I, uh, George and I, this is the first time, so I'm a little bit like uncomfortable here because I've done well, this before. <laughs> but that said, uh, you know, I think uh, you know. What else do you think? We've uh, got to run out a couple more watches. We might as well uh, run through them. Uh, you know, and a brand that I think another brand that I think is a, a terrific value is Grand Seiko. So their prices are extremely reasonable. Um, you know, I think it's because they're uh, Japanese uh, as opposed to Swiss. It helps them keep the, the you know, prices down. But here you have um, alternate finishes in the case, high beat watch, $6,300 retail, uh, frequencies accuracy. So whereas you have like 21,600 vibrations per hour, 28.8, you know, industry standards, so you have 36,000 here. Zenith does the same. Um, you know, on some of their watches, uh, but just a very accurate, good looking watch, blue dial, uh, well-made bracelet, uh, you know, screws in the, in the links. And just, I think Grand Seiko is another brand that will continue to flourish uh, as people look for value and high quality watches that are beach to tux, as you like to say, which is a trend that, um, you know, I think isn't, isn't going away uh, at any time soon. Although I, see, I think people are opening back up to precious metal uh, I, I strap too. watches a little bit. I think, um, I think that what's happening with precious metal strap watches though, like you, like you pointed out with Brega, is just the incredible values. Right. Or for instance, the Patek Philippe, which, was a, which you showed a classic, it's just a fantastic value for what it is. And I think uh, also for people that are watching, let George and I know what you want to hear about. Like we've got thousands of watches here. We've got all price points from million dollar watches to $10,000 watches. Also, if there's things you want to know about the industry, watchmakers, like we want this to be something that you, the audience, want to tune into in the mornings if we start doing this and let us know what you want to hear. And that'll come a long way in helping us. And, uh, and we'll do our best on staying up on the industry, the news, what's going on in the watch world, values, and, um, and anything else. So we have one more watch here uh, I brought out. So uh, here's a blue ceramic case Omega. And uh, you know I think when we see ceramic uh, cases from some of the other brands outside of Swatch Group, 
you know, like an AP, they're 40,000 and up. So uh, a remarkable value. Uh, you have the uh, coaxial movement uh, in the back, exhibition case back. Um, this is a watch, I think, uh, you know, price points around 13.1 on this piece. Uh, it's it's awesome. Uh, you know, Omega offers a terrific value uh, and their tanks, similar to Rolex. I mean, I say that they uh, never, you know, uh, or very rarely break very reliable watches. Well, look, Omega um, is the crown jewel of the Swatch Group. and Holding the group up, yeah. And, and it is just a fantastic, fantastic product. And I think it's, you know, we're huge, huge fans of Omega and the value that they represent. And even with Omega, like you think so much of their business is in China and China was shut down and now they're opening up a little bit. But, you know, you have to give it to these brands that so much of their business, you know, gets disrupted and um, and to the retailers. But as far as a product and what people could look at on a pre-owned basis, it's uh, Omega second to none, uh, even on a new basis. Their moon watches and other product is Classics. just uh, classic, great value. Uh, it, like I said, I think it's the crown jewel of the entire Swatch Group. Awesome. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, took your mind off of some other things. Uh, let us know if you want us to keep doing this or, or what we can uh, focus on or talk about moving forward. Our show on FP Journ is going to go live tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully you find that uh, entertaining as well. We're going to do more of those where we focus on one brand uh, or one theme. And um, yeah, thanks so much and for I, watching. But lastly, I think that the show on Jorn tomorrow will be one of the more interesting shows uh, for people to watch that actually collect timepieces. I don't care if you're collecting Patek Philippe or you're collecting any timepiece. It'll be a it'll be an interesting show. And jo and George and I are we're going to start to do some shows on certain independents, certain brands by model, certain watches that we just feel that if you really want to collect for value and future appreciation. We're going to actually try to uh, educate the audience on what and our friends on what we think that where they should be putting their money. Uh, that said, if anybody wants to buy a watch or sell a watch or trade a watch, give us a call. We're here to you know entertain you, and we're here to uh, do business and hopefully activate your passion and be safe and have a good day.